Get you comfortable? Are you okay? She looks dopey. Her eyes are squinty. Hello everybody, today's episode is all about sinks. But before we begin, let's just say thank you to Solutions Business Interiors for providing us with this snazzy new background. A lot of you know Jazzy, she's been around for 15 years now with Solutions and is celebrating her 15th birthday. Okay, let's do this and talk about laboratory sinks. So we have three types of installation and three types of materials, and we're gonna cover them all today. Let's start with installation, that's drop-in, undermount and integral. Let's start with the most common, which is the drop-in sink. And that is pretty much what you think it is. We cut a hole in the countertop and we drop the sink into the hole. Sometimes the edge of the sink or the lip rests on the top of the countertop and they can be flush or they can sit on top. They are either screwed down or using an adhesive. The only real drawback is you can't sweep something across it because it gets stuck. Think of like a kitchen sink most often or drop-ins. Uh, but they're the most economical option, and which is why we see them the most often. And then we have undermount, which is also like what it sounds, where we cut a hole in the countertop and you take the sink and you put it underneath so it's glued to the underside of the countertop. That means that your countertop edge is exposed to your sink. So that means your material has to be waterproof and chemically resistant depending on what you're doing. There can also be a small lip around the inside that likes to collect gunk. But it's another cheap way to do it. Uh, and depending on your materials, you might have to reinforce the sink. In an integral sink, the sink is bonded or welded to an actual work surface at the factory. So you get the sink and a length of countertop. Uh, the bonus to this is that there's no seam, so it's perfectly smooth. And they usually come with added features like marine edges, which can hold the water inside of the work surface in case you splash, and drain boards. The only real drawback to these is that you have to count for the cost because they're a little expensive and then leave your space to make this larger thing fit. Those are the sink types. Now let's talk about the materials we use in those sinks. And there's three that we normally see, and that's epoxy resin, stainless steel, and polyethylene. Epoxy resin sinks are the most common sink that we see in laboratories. This is because of their high chemical resistance and the strength that the sink itself has. Now be aware that they're very heavy and sometimes have to be supported that you cannot scrub inside of them because they are not very good with abrasion. You have to be careful of high chemical like uh, concentrations like acids and let your users know that water staining can occur anywhere that there's water sitting on the resin and you cannot get it off. Stainless steel sinks are also very common in laboratories. This is because they can be easily disinfected and they're very durable. Now be very careful when we're specifying a stainless steel sink that we talk about the thickness of the metal because it affects the durability and the type of metal used um, because again, it affects the durability and the life. Also be aware that any type of acid use can potentially pit it, but they are a, still a very good sink for the application. And last and kind of least, we have polyethylene. And the reason I say kind of least is because we don't see them very often. They're a very specific application because it's a plastic sink. They're used for high acid uh, locations where there's high concentrations of acid, which will damage the other types of sinks. They're so soft that they can be easily damaged, so we only use them where they're absolutely needed. Just a reminder that all of the different sink types can be ordered in all of the different sink materials. And also be aware that you can mix and match countertop materials and sink materials depending on the application, and sometimes it's actually to a benefit. That is it on the laboratory sinks. If you're looking for more information on the material types, please look at our countertop video series where we go a little more in depth. If you have any comments or questions uh, on this video, please leave below. Thank you for watching. See you next time.